Welcome to Couch Co-op Convo. Today we're talking about a classic, Left 4 Dead 2. Left 4 Dead! Left 4 Dead 2 came out in November 2009. It's a four-player survival horror cooperative shooter. It was developed by Turtle Rock Studios and published by Valve. It was for Xbox 360 and PC. I uh, received a 10 out of 10 on Steam and 89% on Metacritic. Uh, we read the, we were looking at the Game Informer review today, 9.5 out of 10, solid review. Yeah. I feel like I would rate it very similar. When I played both of them, and particularly when I bought the first one, when it originally came out in 08, I thought that the game had such a lacking amount of content because when I put it in, it was like four campaigns. Yeah. And typically the campaign. At first glance, yeah. Yeah, the campaign's 30 minutes if you're playing it really easy to maybe like an hour. Um, but I mean, and now you have teams who go through it in like, you know, 15 minutes or something. <laughs> but the game has a deceptive amount of gameplay options that you wouldn't see on the surface level. The sequel, Left 4 Dead 2, is made up of five campaigns, each campaign being made up of three to five smaller sections. Uh, in between those sections, you get to save, refill your ammo, grab some new health packs at mm. the safe houses, which serve as the checkpoints in the game. You start off in Dead Center, which takes place in Savannah, Georgia. Uh, you got to run through a burning hotel. You walk through the infected, swarmed streets of Savannah, and you find yourself at a shopping mall. There was a gap in years where I didn't play Left 4 Dead for a little while, and when I thought about the shopping mall, like in my mind, it stood uh. out as its own like thing. Uh, for whatever reason, I guess all the levels get yourself lost a bunch of times. We played earlier today and we got ourselves lost in the mall a few times. Yeah, all of the levels, all the campaigns have sort of an open-ended feel to them. Oh yeah. And I think it's purposeful. I think part of your confusion though is from the fact that every little section feels very distinct. Oh yeah. You play the beginning and you're like in a hotel and it, it's like a hotel. Nothing nothing feels generic. No. It feels very thought out. Oh yeah. Very lived in world, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, in the shopping mall, you get yourself a hot little number of a car, yeah. uh, bust out of there, and that takes you to the Dark Carnival. Uh, car breaks down, you find yourself on the highway outside Whispering Oaks Amusement Park, mm -hmm. um, which I actually never knew the name of. I must not have been paying huh. attention during the game, but I did find it out in my research today. I thought that was amusing. Uh, <laughs> you end up at the stadium. There's a lot of pyrotechnics involved, a lot of explosions. After the Dark Carnival, we escape on our helicopter. Our helicopter pilot is bitten by one of the infected, and we have to kill him and crash land the plane. Uh, we find ourselves in a swamp. Um, in order to get ourselves to safety, we have to go deeper into the swamp. And you find yourself in a big plantation house, which uh, has one of the best mod videos I've ever seen of Shrek. The number four campaign in Left 4 Dead 2 is Hard Rain. Again, we go through some suburban streets filled with zombies. It starts raining pretty hard. Uh, <laughs> hence the name Hard, hard rain. rain. There were some moments when we were playing that like one of the teammates got grabbed by a special infected and you can't hear anything yeah. because the sound of the hurricane is just so intense. You don't hear them coming. You don't hear yeah. them attacking anybody else. It was pretty scary. The final campaign of Left 4 Dead the parish takes place in New Orleans, and this is what we've been trying to get to the whole game. This is where our salvation lies. And at this point, New Orleans is just overcome with infected. Um, we have to go through the uh, French Quarter, which is normally a party place. Now it's a zombie place. We have to go through the abandoned quarantine zone. You end up finding yourself at a partially collapsed bridge. Uh, which we played a little chunk of today, and my goodness, I don't. We didn't make it through. No, no we, we didn't. We died. And it's a perfect example of what happens in Left 4 Dead. We split up for like a second. Don't split up. There was a moment of panic where we were both out of ammo and then we kind of split up, who knows why. And it only takes a second and that's it. The, and it died like smart. feet away from ammo. Yeah. Feet away from ammo and new guns. We would have fought our way over this bridge mm -hmm. and found a flotilla of cruise ships that has been commandeered by the military. Uh, very similar to a scene in the book, World War Z. 
Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. World War and Z. And they just all take to the ocean. Yeah. One of one one really good story in World War Z that you didn't get because Paramount didn't want you to have it. Thank you, Paramount. You know, it's interesting that we're on this topic though. World War Z is coming out with a game this year. Is it? Yeah, that's Left for Dead. It's a four player first person survival shooter. Or it might be third person actually. Okay. Swarms of infected come at you and then there's some infected that are like big with armor and everything. Um, it's got that climbing mechanic that you see in the movie where they start piling on each other mm -hmm. and they like build up, which in the book is slow zombies, but I think it's kind of interesting for a game. What's cool though, each campaign in this World War Z game is gonna be set in a different country. So there's one in New York, there's gonna be one in Russia, and there's gonna be one in Israel. So they're actually getting that, the thing that made the book so interesting that you were seeing all these different stories from all over the place. Um, it'll be interesting to see if it can match up to Left 4 Dead. I kind of doubt it. it yeah, seemed, hopefully, because that's what made rough. the book so, so enjoyable was just the varying of stories. Mm -hmm. and, <laughs> and, and the whole reason that goes wrong is because they decide to make him jump out there and look at everything in real time versus gathering these stories after this event has taken place and after they've saved humanity. Yeah. Because afterwards, he has the benefit of going around and finding out, like, how they beat him. You know what I mean? That's what makes it so it special. It would have been so easy to do it that way. Yeah, so easy to do it that way. I don't, I don't know, know why they, they were decided thinking. to do it easier, I guess. Well, sometimes the movie executives are like, you know what? That's not going to sell. They don't want to <laughs> see, see a reporter talking to a bunch of old people. I'll tell you what I don't want to see. It's easy. You just... You shoot, I was thinking about this today. All you gotta do, you you shoot the scene of him getting the assignment, shoot him getting on and off of planes, shoot him introducing their just sipping coffee or whatever. They start talking about the story and then you have all these young actors playing yeah. the stories and all this good yeah. stuff. Beautiful, it would have been an awesome movie. So that's just a little taste of what the main game offers in Left 4 Dead 2. And a couture there's also a plethora of DLC options available for Left 4 Dead. The last substantial piece of DLC in the situation is all four original campaigns <laughs> from Left 4 Dead. Pretty substantial. Just Pretty like substantial. The original. The whole game. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> planning on playing on 360, though, I'd highly recommend just getting Left 4 Dead 2 and getting the DLC. A huge reason why. Um, in the originals, yes, you still have to play as the original four characters. You can't switch out the character models, but you get all the melee weapons, and you get all the new special infected. So all of the cool new features in Left 4 Dead 2 that flesh out the game even more, you can now add into Left 4 Dead 1. Why don't we talk about the special infected a little bit? There's the hunter, which crawls around and pounces on you like a little kitty cat, but instead of giving you cuddles and maybe kneading bread on your shoulder, it kills you. Yeah, so, it just slashes you to death. That's a big one, yeah. You have the smoker, who, you know, is someone who was like smoking too many Marlboros, like a pack a day or something. And then the zombie apocalypse happened. And now they're just like, Bleh. and then <laughs> they, they wrap their tongue around you and they can pull you from a distance. Oh yeah. Um, Oftentimes when, when you get hit, you have no idea where the smoker is. Huh? Yeah. Huh? And it's cool because um, on the smoker, if, you, if your buddy has like a scoped rifle or just a good shot, they can actually just shoot the tongue and break it from any distance, which I always thought was a cool little... Tremor style. Yeah, Tremor style yeah. for reals though, huh? We also have the Boomer. The Boomer is a pretty classic video game villain, I feel like. And what cracks me up is that after Left 4 Dead, the first one came out, almost every zombie game stole something Yeah. to some degree. You'd have a hard time playing a zombie game that didn't have a Boomer of some kind. It's easy to Left play a zombie game and figure out like which one's each, which one's which, you know what I mean? The Boomer though, has a lot of bile, it vomits on you, which attracts more infected to you. And um, like coats you, you can't see what's going on, it's terrible. Yeah, your your vision's all messed up. Then it also explodes, so when you shoot it, it blows up. So if you're too close, you're still gonna get gunked. You know, you're in a tiny little room with your buddies, you're fighting or zombies. Or a hallway, yeah. Or a hallway, and then all of a sudden a boomer like drops out of a hole in the ceiling, and it's just chaos. Yeah. It's complete chaos. There's also the witch yes. from the original group. Uh, the witch is like in a fetal position crying. 
And so, most of the time. Most of the time. Won't attack you if you leave it alone. If you could sneak around it, mm -hmm. not shine your flashlight on it, not shoot around it. She just it. wants to have a good cry. She had a hard day. Yeah. Some, and sometimes you have a hard day. Sometimes you need a good cry. Yeah. If you do wake her up, she gets very upset. Mm. She'll come after whoever woke her up and one hit down you. Oh, yeah. Essentially. And then just keep proceed to you. murder you until yeah. you're dead. And then move on to the next survivor. And of course, we can't forget the tank. The Don't tank forget about that tank. He's going to get you. He's giant. He's huge. He has menacing music, oh, a yeah. menacing theme that comes on when he approaches. He throws giant slabs of rocks at you. It's terrifying he seeing that across. slab of concrete fly across the map. And you always, <laughs> I mean, he can throw it really, really far and oh, yeah. very accurately. Yes. He nails you with that rock. Uh, there's a few times where I've been on like the bridge or something, or in, in the first game, no on No Mercy, you're on the top of the hospital at the end of the first level. If the tank gets you in the right spot, he'll punch you clean off the roof. Oh yeah. And you'll just be dead. Like I'm nothing fairly, else. I have a very vivid memory of us playing one of the campaigns, us being on the top of the roof at the helicopter. I jumped out of the helicopter to save you. Tank punches me across the map. You <laughs> jump in the helicopter and scream left for dead as you fly into the sunset. Well, Thank you for that. That tank will punch you. That rounds out all the original infected. In Left 4 Dead 2, we add even more special infected. We have the Spitter, who also has like some acid reflux like the Boomer, but this one is, well, acid, and yeah. it burns you. And oh, you yeah. were telling me today... It, it damages you exponentially. The yeah. longer you spend in it, the faster it erodes your health, which is, it sucks. Yeah. It'll mess you up real good. It'll take you down quick. Another one that's like very inconvenient to get like in a crowded hallway or something mm -hmm. or like in the middle of a horde because you can't move. And this kind of goes along with the spitter. There's another new character called the jockey, which is a tiny little infected. It hops around. When it grabs your head, the jockey steers you until someone knocks him off of you. But it's a great combo. If oh, the yeah. spitter knocks down the acid, jockey hump, jockey jumps on your head and then just carries you right in there. Because the jockey, it'll, it's programmed to drag you towards danger. So it'll drag you towards like other groups of infected. It'll drag you towards like the, the bile. It'll drag you towards like environmental hazards if there's anything going on. Mm -hmm. The last one I want to mention is the charger, who is our final uh, special infected. He is kind of a similar build to the tank. He's only got one big a arm. A bruiser, definitely. Um, and he charges you from a very far distance. He'll line up and just whoosh, go straight for you. If he touches you, he picks you up, carries you even further, and then just knocks you in the ground and starts. And he knocks you. the other survivors back if there's if you're all like together. Yeah. You all get stunned. Frank, tell us about the AI director. So the AI director 2.0 is the procedural generator that runs Left 4 Dead. It monitors how you're playing, and then it generates the level and the items around you and the infected around you accordingly. If you decide to run off on your own, you will be punished for said running off on your own. You're gonna get hit with extra special infected. You're gonna get hit with a horde of normies, like mm -hmm. hands down, for sure that's gonna happen. That's why it's important to make sure you have a solid team. Cause if you got one guy running around like Leroy Jenkins, it ain't gonna go too well for everybody else. I have always thought that Left 4 Dead's graphics are okay. I don't think they're anything I mean, especially that now. blows me away. Now, yeah. yeah. We were watching the trailer for the first Left 4 Dead or the <laughs> gameplay cinematic. It looks pretty bad. Um, even at the time, though, when Left 4 Dead 2 came out, it looked just like the first one, more yeah. or less, maybe a little bit different. But the graphics weren't anything incredible. It was really the gameplay that sucked me in. Another huge thing that, that stands out is the sound design in the game. Oh, my goodness, mm -hmm. yes. Each of the special infected have their own little jingle that's a different amount of notes but it's always the same it's the same little melody that they add in and it serves as like an alert like a warning you'll like, hear hey, that sound before you see them buckle up yeah time to reload it lets you know they're spawning so when you hear that and if you're really used to the game you're gonna hear you know bum 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 and you'll know who it is Left 4 Dead has a very memorable score. Um, it's co composed by Mike Moraski. The instrumentation's awesome. So he has a lot of pianos playing dissonant chords. He has a lot of string instruments, violins, cellos, um, which 
add a lot. They, they use a lot of really cool techniques. What sticks out to me in Left 4 Dead 2 particularly is that he adds in like banjo, some slide guitar, like on resonator. Oh yeah. He, he adds all these instruments that sound like the South. Very and much so. It feels real good. It, it's it very good at, me, at helping with the setting. Like mm -hmm. you feel like you're in the South and you feel terrified. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming that these guys are bros because on their IMDb, they've worked together a lot. Mm -hmm. But you also have Andrew Lackey, who is the... Cinematic sound designer. Cinematic sound designer, which I'm guessing is adding in all these different special effects. Love for Dead feels good because it sounds good. Like if you hit something, if you're shooting something, it sounds good. Um, all the zombie effects are super awesome. Uh, both the voicing of the zombies, who was done by Mike... Mike Patton from Faith No More. He did all the voices for all the infected, which you just need to realize nothing digital was, was added. There was nothing edited about the voice. No, it was uh, just talent. He created these sounds, yeah. If you've ever listened to the voices in Left 4 Dead of these zombies and found yourself asking, there's something about those voices, but I just don't know what it is. What is it? It's Mike Patton of Faith No More. That's it's what it. it is. That's what it is. It yeah. is it. It is it. it. <laughs> Another detail in Love for Dead that you gotta love is the wide selection of weapons that you have. So you have a ton of melee weapons. You have the fire axe, the crowbar, the baseball bat, and the cricket bat, depending on which map mm -hmm. you're on. You have the katana, which you picked up today. Very exciting. The much chainsaw, exciting. which I picked up a short time later, mm -hmm. uh, which I'm not a huge fan of running around the whole level for, but I did get excited. I haven't played the game in a minute. Picked up the chainsaw, got like four or five zombies, picked up my double-wielded pistols again. We'll get to that in a second. That one's good, the chainsaw, but it's the only melee weapon that's finite. It yeah. has uh, gas, and then once you run out, that's it. And that's the nice thing about the melee weapon. In your set, you have like, your primary and then your secondary weapon. Most of the pistols and melee weapons are infinite, except mm. for that chainsaw. But boy, you get covered in some blood. Above the melee weapons, you have your other secondary weapons, your pistols. Mm -hmm. There is a single pistol, a double pistol. And one of the things I've always liked about the dual wielding pistols is that it's two different guns. Because in the zombie apocalypse, you don't have a matching set of guns. It would be too convenient. You just have whatever guns you've found. That's interesting. I haven't noticed that, but that's true. Yeah, one of them is a P220, the other one's a Glock 17. Wow. Little fun fact for you. Remember that for later. There will be a quiz. Um, outside the two pistols in the dual wielding category, you have the 50 caliber Desert Eagle, which is the Magnum pistol in the game. Uh, America. Which, is, I mean... America. Uh, you just America all over the zombies. If, yeah. Yeah. I mean, come on. In our primary weapons, we have three tiers. You have tier one, it's made up of the Uzi and the SMG, and our two pump shotguns. Um, all the guns kind of have, like, within their class, two sets of guns, and each gun serves a better purpose. Mm -hmm. There's always one gun that's a little bit better for hordes of normals, and one gun that's a little bit better for special infected. Tier two is made up of your assault rifles, and we got three of them. The M16A2 assault rifle um, is pretty much a jack of all trades, um, but it's not so good at the running gun. It's a little bit heavy. It's got a lot of recoil to it. The FN SCAR is like the strongest of the three, but it has the slowest reload time. The AKM is less accurate than the SCAR, but it's got a faster reload time and its damage per second is actually the highest of the three rifles. Uh, in tier two, you also have another two set of shotguns, and these are the auto shotguns, which are, I mean, just way more fun than having a pump. Left 4 Dead 2 came out only a year after the original game uh, was released. Yeah. Um, when Left 4 Dead 2 was announced at E3 and they unveiled the trailer, the fans were upset about two major things. Um, they didn't think the graphics were up to par with the original game. Okay. And they didn't like the fact that there were new characters. They were so involved and invested in these characters they were playing with for only a year. Um, the developers released a couple of uh, statements saying that they had actually had the discussion in-house as to whether this should be new DLCs or a whole new game. 
and they just had so much new content and so many more additions that they wanted to put out that they just felt it was better to put it out as a brand new package. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad they did. It's all in there now. It's so all-encompassing. Yeah. Um, a Steam community group was formed. Uh, the Left 4 Dead 2 boycott. No Left 4 Dead 2. And within the first weekend, it had gained 10,000 members. Uh, a month later, they had reached 37,000. Valve was very concerned about this, obviously. What they decided to do was they took two of the community's most prominent members and they flew them out to the Valve Corporation headquarters and had them play test Left 4 Dead 2. Immediately afterwards, both of the members of the group said that they felt that the sequel was very well done. Uh, they were very happy with the results. Well, it's a great game. That's it's, why. Because it's a fantastic it's game. They why. knew all they had to do was sit down and play the game, mm -hmm. and that was going to be it. Um, a month before the release, the boycotts group's initiators announced that they were calling the boycott off and they were shutting <laughs> down the group that was now over 40,000 members strong. A month before it comes out. They, they it's like came, cutting it to the wire. They came back with their mink coat. Yeah. They pulled up uh -huh. outside the meeting in their new Mustang. They yeah. got out. Hey, guys. Uh, so Left 4 Dead was pretty good. Uh, <laughs> you know, we just thought we're going to disband the group. Sadly, the closest thing we're going to get to Left 4 Dead 3 is the cameo the boomer has in Cabin in the Woods. Yeah. Uh, for those of you who have seen Cabin in the Woods, there's a scene where they're showing all these monsters. And for a second, you see the boomer. And it was actually in the in the movie as a reference because at the time they were going to develop a Cabin in the Woods DLC where you would start off on the top level in the cabin and work your way down into the underground facility. Spoiler alert. Um, but unfortunately, the team developing the DLC ran out of money. So our last glimpse, our last tease of Left 4 Dead, maybe forever, is the millisecond of Boomer and Kevin in the Woods, and that's all we get. It's a fun millisecond. I remember everybody going, oh, Boomer. Boomer? Well, that's all I have to say about Left 4 Dead 2. I could just go on forever and ever, but it's not going to be entertaining. And honestly, I'd rather just play some more of it. Yeah, we can just stop this and go play some more. Frank, who would you recommend Left 4 Dead 2 to? I would recommend this game for obviously a little bit more mature of an audience. I definitely played it at a younger age, but I was very mature for my age. Um, I'm less mature now. Not mature enough for my age. It's gone down. It's, it's, what are you well, what do? happens is maturity stayed the same. It plateaued. Yes. For a while, you were ahead of the game. And then my age just kept going. There's nothing I can do about that one. Um, <laughs> but I definitely recommend the game to fans of the horror genre. Okay. Fans of first-person shooters. And good old Xbox 360 fans. I would recommend Left 4 Dead 2 on top of what Frank said. But also to anyone who really enjoys tactical shooters i feel like left for dead to me feels closest to counter-strike okay we don't have this thing it's where you're just in comparison you're not like aiming down the scope it's not all this new modern fps all you need to worry about is am i in the spot i need to be in am i shooting the right thing do i have a gas tank near me that i can throw down on the ground to use to clear exactly. some of this fort out and if the four of you work together if you got three buds and you were like in or locked you can really develop a tactical team oh, yeah. that could wreck through these levels. And if you want to compete on the highest level, if you want to be taking the campaigns on expert mode, you need to get to that level. If you can find yourself a copy of Left 4 Dead 2, play it. It's not going to get old. Not ever. That AI generator is going to keep you going forever. So we all know the lesson here today in Left 4 Dead. Vaccinate your children, everybody. Make sure you go out Get your green flu shot. Oh, watch out. There's another tank coming. Okay, the... Where's the, the chopper? The chopper's here. Get to the chopper. Is it at the stage? Where is it? It's, uh, it's, it's where I was kind of saying. Okay, cool. We're just going for it? I'm going. No. No. What is stopping me? Oh, dude, I made a terrible mistake. Oh! Left for dead! No! I thought there was another stairs. Ooh, yeah, that's, that is a terrible mistake. Uh.